So let's talk about it. Cannibal Holocaust. Ruggero Diodato. I have to go Super Mario on you for a second. Super Italian guy. I don't know if it's Ruggero, Ruggero. Honestly, at this point, I, I don't care. I don't respect this man enough as a director, as a human being. Uh, his morals. Everything Everything is wrong with this man as a human being and as an artist. All around filmmaker. Just a shitty person. And if you have Shudder, I highly recommend you to go check out their new series. It's called Cursed Films. And the second season, they have Cannibal Holocaust on the fifth episode. Go check that out. After this, though, hit that like button, hit the subscribe, notification bell, all that shit they make you say on you. You know the vibes, man. You can get me in the algorithm again. I've been absent off YouTube, so I, we have to do this whole thing again, right? Anyway, Cannibal Holocaust. Let's talk about this shit. So I watched this movie when I was, shit, I want to say like maybe 14. I bought a I bought a bootleg DVD off of eBay and I had to go through hell to get this thing because this is back in the day. This is probably like early 2000s, very early 2000s. Um, I went through hell to get this movie and the reason was because I was a part of a forum called Joblo. Joblo is a huge YouTube um, channel now. It used to be a forum back in the day and they had uh, Arrow on the head. Arrow in the head? Yeah, Arrow in the head. Now, why, why would an arrow be on the head? You don't put a fucking arrow on your head. You put it in your head. Dummy. Stupid. Anyway, Arrow in the head was a forum and they were talking about disturbing movies and just kind of like fucked up movies in general. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, as a kid, I liked wrestling. I liked hardcore wrestling. I like really extreme, like everything kind of like music. I'm extreme with everything. So, uh, well, not about everything, but you know what I mean. So I was into horror movies, and I wanted to kind of test my, you know, test the waters out with the disturbing uh, movies category. And as a kid, I got my hands on Cannibal Holocaust. And I watched it with a friend of mine, my friend Tim. If he watches this, shout out to him. Salute. Oh, boy, that fucked us up for life. Uh, I still haven't recovered from this movie. This is the only movie ever, ever, ever. Well, I shouldn't say the only, because there's a lot of cannibal movies, and they all disturb me equally. But this is the only genre that actually disturbs me. Like, I have a hard time ever watching these movies again. Uh, Cannibal Holocaust, I've seen two or three times, just go, you know, showing other people. And uh, certain portions of the movie, I can't watch it. And I'll go through those with you guys, but certain portions really hit my triggers. You know what I mean? Like, the animal cruelty stuff that we'll get into, I can't do that in movies. I just, it's, it's, it's the one thing that I can't do. And it's probably because it's real. You know what I mean? Anything else in a movie, I'm like, oh, it's this is an actress or this is an actor. This is fake. This is CGI. Animal cruelty back in the 70s, especially during like the exploitation era, grindhouse era, that shit was real. So especially in, in Italy, the Italians were rough with the animals, man. But let's get into Cannibal Holocaust. Ruggero Diodato. This man, uh, oh boy, man. People talk about Stanley Kubrick being abusive to his cast. This guy was all sorts of fucked up. And uh, if you want to check this out, I, I I mean, Grindhouse Releasing, put it out if you want to check this out. It's it's available still. Comes with a little slip cover and all that. It's kind of hard to get it out. But, uh, pause. Yeah. Holy shit! Boom. Comes with some other stuff. The soundtrack, I gotta say, is one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard in my life. And actually, it, it comes with the soundtrack right here. Um, I would love to get this on LP, get it on a vinyl. But uh, it comes with the soundtrack. If anything, this is the best part of the movie is the music. The soundtrack is phenomenal. Like, five stars, some of the best music for a movie I've ever heard in my life. And it's ironic because the music doesn't match up to the movie. The movie, uh, why is it disturbing? Well, there's a lot of sexual abuse in there. There's a lot of animal cruelty in there. There's racism towards the in indigenous people um, that are along the Amazon River. Uh, per pretty much anything you can imagine that's offensive and fucked up, Diodato does it in this movie. Absolutely. So this movie was shot in 1980 in uh, Colombia, I believe, alongside the Amazon River. And they used real indigenous tribes that were living there. And no, they probably weren't cannibals. <laughs> like, Not probably, they weren't cannibals. <laughs> Just like indigenous tribes that live there. 
And in the 70s, um, they, they exploited every culture you could imagine. I mean, you go back to the Mondo Kane documentaries, which pretty much influenced this movie, I would say. Uh, Mondo Kane is like a mockumentary. Uh, there was a lot of real footage, mostly all real footage, but a lot of it was staged where they would take advantage of African tribes and indigenous tribes and kind of make them do all this gross out stuff to make it look like everybody in Africa and everybody in Amazon is, is living like this, where in reality, that wasn't obviously the truth. Cannibal Holocaust. Fuck, man. We're in for a ride. So this movie starts out with basically an anthropologist in New York University looking for a team of filmmakers that had left to go to the Amazon to basically do a documentary on the tribes there. These people went missing for years. Now, fast forward years later, we're back in New York City and a new crew of filmmakers uh basically actually a, a crew of rescue people um they went to rescue them and the rescuers are people of all different walks of life you have italians you have american guys you have all all sorts of different people it's like the united nations walking into the amazon with cannibals essentially and a bunch of animals dying unfortunately so uh this movie has a muskrat dying uh they shoot pigs <sighs> turtle Man, um, I'm pretty sure there's a monkey in there somewhere. I, I, if I'm being honest, I've watched it three times. The only time I've watched those parts is is when I was a kid. Um, and it's stuck in my brain. It's one of those things that really traumatized me as a kid. So whenever I happen to watch it, um, I know when it's coming up. And luckily, if I ever want to revisit it again, nowadays I have the Blu-ray which the Blu-ray has a cut without the animal stuff. So you can actually just watch it, avoiding all of the traumatic experience that I'm about to talk about. You can avoid all of that shit right in here. The really uncomfortable scene with uh, what looks to be like a young young woman. Um, she's clearly one of the tribal women or girls. I, I really don't know. Um, and they basically gang are her. I can't say the R word on YouTube because, you know, this video will get taken down, but use your imagination. Or please don't, because it's disturbing. There's another part where they insert like a stone dildo inside of this girl and murder her by inserting a stone dildo, which is like, oh, it's it's shaped like a triangle and it's sharp at the tippy top. It's not a good look, man. This movie is not uh, for the faint of heart. And um, it gets much worse because then the animal cruelty comes in. Now, their excuse to justify this was that they ate everything they killed. Um, they straight up stabbed like a muskrat in the neck. Uh, they shoot a bunch of pigs. The roughest part is definitely the turtle. There's a humongous turtle that they take. They behead it. Um, they take the shell off. They're like playing with the guts. It's a whole like five minute sequence. They really drag it out. It's the this is the most uncomfortable movie I've ever watched. And I've watched like Solo. I've watched everything that you can pretty much imagine that you probably shouldn't watch as a human being. Um, as far as movies, I don't watch like weirdo like dark web shit. I, I'm not into real stuff. I don't want to see anything like illegal. This right here is the only one. Um, and alongside everything else that it influenced, like you know, Cannibal, uh, Ferox, and Jungle Holocaust, and everything else. And I'll give those at the end. Um, they all are the same vibe as this, honestly. And these are the only type of movies that really fuck me up it's because of like the abuse to women and local tribes and, uh, just kids being present for like animal tour. It's just, it's weird. It's weird. The seventies were fucking weird. Everybody was on drugs. That's what I'm just going to charge this up to. Like everybody was high. And that's another fun fact on the set. Apparently there was mountains of cocaine available and people were just getting really, really high the whole time. So I don't know, they're killing animals, getting high, like abusing the local tribes, and it's just, it's a bad look. Let's talk about the violence in this. The gore. The gore is like a 10 out of 10. For a 1980 movie like this, man, the gore looks real. There's no CGI, obviously, no special effects were, you know, existing at the time. This is all practical effects, and the practical effects look real. There's a part where the dude gets his dick cut off, and I legit for the longest time thought this was a snuff film i was like they, that dude got his dick cut off like when i was a kid i was like i just they cut that dude's dick off like that dude is probably bled to death in the amazon that's what i thought for the longest time and i wasn't the only one because uh many people thought that that was like the rumor was that this was a snuff film and that's how they tried to advertise it 
had a you know clause in the contract that basically once you participate in this movie you can't shoot any other films for a year so basically he was trying to present this as a snuff film as as a real film that these people have died and uh they're nowhere to be found and then eventually in a year once they pop up in other movies then he's already made his money so it didn't really matter that it came out that it's fake but that didn't really happen um what did happen is that he had to go to court for moral reasons for breaking human morals um and basically they were trying to jail him there he had to bring in the actors to prove that he didn't kill people on tape um the animal cruelty was essentially what got him jailed um or not jailed like got got him taken to court and got this movie banned this movie was banned for the longest time hence the reason i had to pay like you know like 50 bucks on ebay back in 2002 or whatever um and now it's like widely available you can get this on amazon right now no one cares it's on shutter you can watch this on shutter right now once again though if you want if you're curious enough to check it out and you want to avoid the animal cruelty parts there's still plenty of fucked up things in this i'm not going to give you the whole rundown of the movie that's basically all it is it's a it's a crew of people that go to find another lost crew previously that are in the amazon and those people are dead they find their footage and they're like oh shit there's a bunch of cannibals here let's go explore this they see a bunch of cannibals or uh tribal people they treat them like absolute dog shit they rape their women they burn their homes they kill all their animals they just absolute dog shit people and and the move the point of the movie essentially in an artsy way is to show that the western world is the real cannibals and we're awful because at the end of the movie it asks oh who are the real cannibals is it the viewer is it you or is it really the can like it's tries to get all like fucking deep on you this was before blair witch project like blair witch project gets credit for being the first found footage film you know and the mcpherson tape which is like an alien movie that was made for like tv really shitty movie actually uh, people hype that up. They're like, oh my god, you gotta see them at first. And it's a bunch of dudes in, like, dollar store alien costumes, like, on VHS. It's not great. It's really not. Like, look how serious. It's really not good. I'm dead serious. Look how serious I am. It's not good. However, there's other good shit out there. Like the Blair Witch. I love the Blair Witch. Found, foot- found footage movies can be done right. Cannibal Holocaust is done correctly. Because all the footage is is found when they're getting murdered and stuff. It's when the university finds the footage. So you're watching it. So it's all found footage in 1980. In that aspect, I give it I give it credit. You know, it's it's respectable that it was original and creative and all that, but still doesn't justify killing all these poor animals. And I, I didn't like that. And I also didn't like when I watched the Shutter documentary hearing the the woman, uh, I forget her, I forget her name. I don't, I'm a dick. But anyway, they killed they killed a bunch of animals. I don't give fuck your name um the woman she didn't want to do the sex scene and she didn't want to show her breasts and then i guess uh the adato who took her to the jungle and was yelling at her and and the monkeys could hear it the fucking alligators were crawling and the the piranhas left because he was so loud and he essentially scared the shit out of her and once she started crying he took advantage of her and had her do it because she was at her weakest so i mean this is like somebody that's preying on people when they're emotional just a shitty human being all around and it just I don't know. The more I, I know about the guy behind this movie, the less I like it. Because when I saw it as a kid, it fucked me up. And I was like, wow, that movie was impactful. Now I'm just like, yo, this guy manipulated everyone. The whole cast, like, the tribes I'm sure he manipulated. Like, this this was not a good person. Anyway, if you want to check it out, it's on Shutter. I'll give you a couple, you know, recommendations, if you want to call it that. I don't really recommend you to watch any of these, though. But if you're a fucking weirdo and you want to check these out, there's a couple cannibal movies that came out after this. So let's start off with the one that we're talking about right now, Cannibal Holocaust. Boom. Boom. Right? Black and white, getting classy on your bitch ass, right? Right? All right. The Mountain of the Cannibal God. Uh, I believe this has a U.S. version. I don't know. This is the U.K. one, I think. Uh, I've honestly never seen this one. I've never seen this one. I found this super cheap and uh i'm a completist like i i I can guarantee i'm never gonna watch this but i just had to finish like my cannibal movies because i'm like a fucking weirdo like i have a library of film i like to study film and stuff so certain genres i feel like it's history like i have to have it just for the point of reference just to do kind of this like if i have it i can show it to you probably will never watch it but anyway um i believe this is from code red yeah code red kino is carrying this now uh jungle holocaust 
This came after Ferox and Cannibal Holocaust. Again, this disgusting too. They kill a bunch of alligators and skin them and just all a bunch of stuff you don't need to see. Like it's just it's just I don't know why they did this. Uh Cannibal Ferox Ferox, not Ferocost. I don't know what what is a Ferocost? I'm just making shit up here. Cannibal Ferox. Um just as gross as Cannibal Holocaust. It's right up there. Awful. Absolutely awful. Gore, top notch. The rest, dog shit. Uh, this is Sacrifice, I believe. Um, I think this was called... This has another name. Uh, let's see, it's like the, the Man by the River. Oh, The Man from the Deep River. This was before Cannibal Holocaust. But it's a lot more tame than Cannibal Holocaust. Sorry for the glare too. But believe me, you're not missing out on much. These are like... You should never watch these. This is primitives um severin put this out and severin also put out another one that i just forgot to bring up but again not going downstairs to bring it up uh the other one is eaten alive eaten alive disgusting absolutely disgusting i'm telling you just trust me on this absolutely fucking disgusting the soundtrack absolutely amazing eaten alive is probably the best soundtrack i've ever heard in my life the soundtrack is worth buying. Like, go buy that. Keep the soundtrack. Throw the disc out. That's what I would do. With that said, hit subscribe, hit like, notification, all that YouTube bullshit. You know the deal. You know the vibes.